Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Welcome to Let's Get Personal, the podcast where we dive into the real-life experiences of living with rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, and get expert insights to help us better understand our health. I'm Shelley Fritz, and in this episode, we're focusing on rheumatoid factor, or RF, a key blood test used in the diagnosis and management of rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid factor is an autoantibody that plays a role in the immune system response and is often associated with autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis. While it may be commonly associated with RA, its presence or absence alone does not determine a diagnosis. Understanding what this test measures, how it is used by healthcare providers, and what it means for disease progression and treatment can help patients make more informed decisions about their care. Joining us is Dr. Jeff Curtis, a rheumatologist and epidemiologist at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, who specializes in RA and related disease research and clinical practice. In this episode, Dr. Curtis will explain what RF is, how it is tested, and its significance in RA diagnosis and disease management. Let's get started. Dr. Curtis, welcome to Let's Get Personal. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. We covered the definition of RF in our previous episode with our guest, Dr. Michaels. But can you explain to our listeners what role RF plays in the immune system and why it is relevant to RA? Certainly, Shelley. Rheumatoid factor, or RF, is an autoantibody. And unlike typical antibodies that fight infections, RF can attach itself to other antibodies and create immune complexes or clusters. Instead of fighting infections and threats coming from outside the human body, autoantibodies can interfere with or even attack the body's own defense system, turning on itself, so to speak, that can start inflammation, which then causes joint swelling and pain. If left uncontrolled, RA can eventually damage joints and sometimes even other organs like the lungs. While all RF is commonly associated with RA, it's not exclusive to RA. It can also appear in other autoimmune diseases, chronic infections, and uncommonly, even in some healthy individuals. Although not definitive, meaning we as clinicians do not rely only on the rheumatoid factor lab test to diagnose someone with RA or other diseases, a positive RF lab test supports an RA diagnosis when combined with other clinical signs and symptoms. Between 60 and 80% of RA patients will have a positive rheumatoid factor test and be so-called seropositive. That said, a patient can have a positive RF factor test and not have any kind of arthritis. Additionally, how does RF factor into the distinction between a seropositive and seronegative RA? Seropositive rheumatoid arthritis just means that a person is blood test positive for certain antibodies, including rheumatoid factor or anti-CCP antibody. Conversely, seronegative RA just means that you're negative for both of those. Either way, though, seropositive RA and seronegative RA still means that somebody has rheumatoid arthritis. What should patients expect when getting tested for rheumatoid factor? How is the test performed? It's performed like any other blood test. There's no preparation required. Generally, you go in for an appointment, and the nurse or another member of the clinical care team will clean the skin on your arm, which is generally where most blood tests are taken. A needle is then used to do a quick blood test, and you may feel a pinch or some pain for a few seconds. Once the blood is collected, it's sent to the lab for testing, and then the results are usually returned within a few days. Rheumatoid factor usually is expressed as a number, which can sometimes vary a bit depending on the lab. Your doctor is the best person to help explain what those numbers mean. As you stated, Dr. Curtis, RF test results usually come back with a number. So how should patients interpret their rheumatoid factor levels? What do these numbers actually mean? Rheumatoid factor is usually measured in units per milliliter, and different labs may have somewhat different reference ranges. Many labs consider RF positive if it's above 14 to 20 units per milliliter, and higher numbers may indicate worse disease or worse outcomes. Some people have a mildly elevated RF without having rheumatoid arthritis. That's part of the role of the rheumatology provider, to integrate results from this and other blood tests with your symptoms, 
your physical exam findings, and imaging results. When patients are being evaluated for RA, what are the key lab values and tests that can help confirm the diagnosis alongside rheumatoid factor? Could you explain how these initial results guide early treatment decisions? Certainly. When evaluating for rheumatoid arthritis, several lab tests, not just RF, plus imaging tests can complement the rheumatoid factor lab test in establishing a diagnosis as well as guiding treatment. Somewhat like rheumatoid factor, a different antibody, anti-CCP, is typically positive in someone who has rheumatoid arthritis. Another group of relevant tests in this disease are the SED rate, or ESR, as well as C-reactive protein, or CRP. They are important to consider at the diagnostic as well as the prognostic stage. These two blood tests monitor levels of inflammation. That inflammation can spill out of the joints and into the bloodstream where we can measure it. Imaging is also important. X-rays can be ordered to detect early signs of joint damage. However, ultrasound or MRIs of the joints may be used for more sensitive detection of inflammation and joint changes. X-rays see bones and identify whether there has been damage, but ultrasound and MRI can show inflammation and show what's going on not just in bones but also in the lining of the joints, the so-called synovium. Finally, most RA patients should undergo medication-related lab test monitoring that may include a complete blood count or CBC, liver and kidney function tests, and lipid tests like cholesterol, as they can affect and be affected by various RA medications that you and your provider may be considering. These lab tests are also useful to monitor over time to avoid medication-related side effects. Together, a combination of these tests provides a comprehensive picture that informs early treatment decisions aiming to control inflammation quickly, prevent joint damage, and get patients on the best medication for them and use it in the most safe way. You mentioned earlier that some people without RA can have elevated RF levels. What are some non-RA conditions that can cause a positive RF test? As I mentioned, the RF test is not specific to any one disease, which is why it can't be used by itself to make or break the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis or, frankly, any other condition. Like I also mentioned, I occasionally have patients that come to me with a positive rheumatoid factor blood test that have no signs and symptoms of arthritis whatsoever. You can't have rheumatoid arthritis if, in fact, you don't have arthritis. So a blood test by itself does not a diagnosis make. That said, to answer your question, there are a number of other autoimmune diseases, like Sjogren's syndrome, where this can be positive. There's also some chronic infections, like hepatitis C, or even tuberculosis, that can turn a rheumatoid factor lab test positive. We also see age-related increases. Rheumatoid factor can rise slightly as people get older. And a few percent of people who are healthy and have no medical problems or certainly don't even have arthritis may test positive for rheumatoid factor with no clear cause. One important thing to note is is that family members of RA patients sometimes get tested. In someone like that who tests positive, they are at somewhat higher risk to later develop rheumatoid arthritis even if they don't have symptoms or any type of joint problem yet. So maintaining a relationship with a rheumatologist and somebody who is known to be rheumatoid factor positive and who is, for example, a family member of somebody with known rheumatoid arthritis might be important. And that's another issue to talk to your doctor about. For patients with RA, does RF status change how doctors approach treatment decisions? It certainly does, at least in some cases. Sometimes patients who have been rheumatoid factor negative may become positive over a period of time. If that happens, it's usually early in the course of disease, such that by the time somebody has had rheumatoid arthritis for more than a year, if they remain negative beyond a year, I usually don't retest after that. Some studies also suggest that rheumatoid factor positive RA may be more aggressive and have a higher risk of joint damage. Certain medications, like biologics, may work differently in RF positive versus RF negative patients. We have some data suggesting that a few medications may work better in patients who are RF positive. However, rheumatoid arthritis treatment overall is based on symptoms, levels of inflammation, and joint damage, and not just the rheumatoid factor blood test result. And those blood tests are just one part of the story. If a patient tests RF negative but still has RA symptoms, should they be retested later? As mentioned, if someone is RF negative at the time of initial diagnosis, they usually will stay negative, but because a small fraction of people may turn positive, I usually do recheck in about a year later. 
there isn't formal guidance about the right thing to do, but I'm sharing my personal experience about how I approach that. Since RF isn't typically tracked over time, what should patients regularly monitor to stay on top of their RA management and treatment response? Well, after diagnosis, the focus shifts from initial testing to ongoing monitoring and self-management. Those are essential for maintaining good disease control. One of the most valuable tools that I've found is regular symptom tracking. Patients can monitor signs like fatigue, joint stiffness, and pain levels, and tools like the Patient Spot app by Global Healthy Living Foundation can be used for symptom tracking. We've done quite a few projects where rheumatoid arthritis patients track their symptoms using the app over time. It's a great way to monitor and visualize how things are changing and to share it with your healthcare provider. In addition, inflammation markers like the SED rate and CRP are relevant blood tests for tracking disease activity over time. Those blood tests often provide insight into how well the treatment is controlling inflammation and do fluctuate up and down, often reasonably well correlated with somebody's blood levels of inflammation. The medication side effect monitoring is also crucial, but it will depend on which rheumatoid arthritis medicines are being used, and patients may need periodic blood work. Again, it's a little bit hard to generalize because it does vary according to which medicine we're talking about. So it's something you should talk to your healthcare provider about how often you might need that kind of blood work monitoring. Ultimately, RA management is dynamic. Patients should stay engaged by tracking their health, attending regular follow-up visits, and discussing any changes with your provider. Many patients want to take an active role in managing their RA. How can they use their rheumatoid factor status to have more informed discussions with their doctor? That's a great question. If someone is newly diagnosed, I think it's quite reasonable to ask, do I need any additional tests to confirm my diagnosis? A rheumatoid arthritis-related blood test, the rheumatoid factor does make it more likely that somebody with arthritis symptoms really has RA, not one of the other conditions that we discussed. That said, 20 to 40 percent of RA patients don't test positive for rheumatoid factor, so being negative still allows for the possibility that somebody has or could develop rheumatoid arthritis. It's also reasonable to consider how your rheumatoid factor lab test status may affect your treatment options, and if you're already on treatment, to ask your healthcare provider what are the other factors that we need to monitor to assess how well my RA is controlled, and I've given you insights into several of them that may be useful. Remember, the rheumatoid factor lab test is just one piece of the puzzle, and patients should focus on their overall disease management. Thank you, Dr. Curtis, for helping us make sense of this important test and what it means for patients. Thank you for having me on the podcast. It was a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for listening to Let's Get Personal, the podcast where we dive into the real life experiences of living with rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, and get expert insights to help us better understand our health. This audio guide was made possible with support from UCB. If you like what you've heard, be sure to rate our podcast, write a positive review, and spread the word by sharing with your family and friends. It will help more people like you find us. And before you go, make sure you take a listen to some of our other great podcasts on the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. You can find all of GHLF's podcasts at ghlf.org slash listen. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Thank you.